So the story is my dad started coming to Martha's Vineyard in, I'd say 1971. He was born in 1946. So he must have been 25, maybe even earlier, probably in 1968. When he was like 21 or 22. Everyone he knew would party in Falmouth, and then he saw the boat. What a beautiful dog. And then he saw the boat, and he uh, he decided, hey, I'm gonna take that boat. Where does that boat go? And someone's like, oh, this is this island. He got to Martha's Vineyard, and he told me it was crazy. He said, you know, they were drinking whiskey in the back of pickup trucks. There was like four cops on the island. You could do whatever you want, man. You know, there was farmland, and they let you sleep on the farmland. Uh, there was a naked beach that him and all his friends went to. It sounded like, you know, Bohemia, but... Um, these are the stories my dad tells me. He's like, ah, me and your mother, we had a blast, you know? And it's, it's an island about a mile, a couple miles off the coast of Massachusetts. So you gotta take a big boat to get there. This boat will actually house cars. You can put like, I don't know, 60, 70, about 60 cars on the boat, maybe a little more. Um, they're called steamships. You know, the old steamship authority here in Martha's Vineyard, Woods Hole, Mass, right? So. My dad bought a salt box for 110 grand, 100, you know, back in 19, probably 86. He started coming to the island. He would always rent, and him and my mother would ride their bicycles around all over the place. Look, I always got the tie on. No, I don't play. People respect you when you dress nice. I'm telling you, I got to shave, though. I feel scruffy, and I needed to get a haircut. But two things I didn't get to do because I worked so much, but I'll get there. But the idea is, you know, my dad came to this island, and he loved it, man. It was his place, you know, he, he, he loved it. And uh, whenever I come to visit my mom now, who still lives here, it's a blessing, you know? It's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit, you just gotta drive there and you gotta take a boat. But it's worth every single second. And um, every time I come to the island, there's a special feeling, you know, and especially this time. This is my first time coming back since my dad passed, in the, you know, back in the summer, but. It's like the first time I'm coming back for Thanksgiving and my dad's not here, you know, and uh, I'm okay with it. I am. Today, I'm okay with it. Today, I don't I don't get that deep, deep grieving feeling of pain. I miss my dad. Don't get me wrong. And I could start crying if I wanted to, but today's a beautiful day. I hit Bitcoin. I called it on my live stream and we hit, you know, whenever I got my team to glory, it feels good. And it's due diligence, you know. You said, how does he get so lucky? How does he hit Bitcoin? so much how is he constantly this accurate it's because i love what i do i love going over bitcoin i love finding the chart i love finding the mystery tonight the chart's gonna be a little different than it was this morning and i'm gonna have to figure it out tomorrow morning the next day and onward and upwards right so it's a constant challenge and i think that's what i needed in life you know i needed life to be a constant challenge that's why i work seven days a week that's why i grind the way i grind that's why i dress the way i dress i just want i want to hit these height 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 levels man of excellence in life and I know we can all do it and you got to find something you're passionate about if you're passionate about something man you could literally go to the moon and back baby you can go to the Jupiter moon you can go anywhere you want I'm fine looking at myself I'm like hey, I don't spend a lot of time in the mirror I spend a lot of time on camera but I try not to look in the mirror too much but uh, you know with that being said everybody enjoy your time with your family this week Attempt not to be so into Bitcoin, even though the coins are going so, you know, there's going to be some pumps this weekend. It's looking pretty good. And talk about the Binance idea, you know, they pumped the price of Bitcoin. They made governments look incompetent. They shook down a guy who used to look, used to work at McDonald's and became a billionaire. Like, little Asian dude. You know what I mean? And again, there was American customers that wanted to be on Binance. Let's be clear. They were begging to be on Binance. They have printed our dollar to zero. People had no choice but to go to Binance and trade to change their lives. Like, they're printing our money to zero. And so when we find an alternative, they block us from that alternative. They don't want you to win. But you know what? Bitcoin's gonna win and Bitcoin's pumping today, baby. We're gonna show them who's boss. We, the people. And we're gonna, we're gonna show them who's boss over time. And without violence, with love, determination, and with our smarts, we're smarter than they are, everyone. Our tech is better than theirs. We figured it out and they didn't figure it out yet. So, are you a maker or are you a taker, baby? Are you on the Bitcoin train? Or are you on the fiat sinking ship? Let me know. I love you all. Have a great day. Be safe.